Hello everyone, so welcome to another Python tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to create a 3D Pong game using the Yersinet engine. And when I first started my channel sometime last year, I made a Pong game video about a Pong game video with the turtle module. And in this video, I'm going to remake the game, but in 3D with the Yersinet engine. And I hope you like it. So first of all, you want to open up your blank Python file and you want to import Yersinet. So from Yersinet import star and now what you do is write app is equal to yersna and app.run and this is the basic structure for setting up a yersna game and what i'm going to do is set the window color to orange by writing window.color is equal to color.orange and since this is a pong game we obviously need a table so i'm going to create a table right here and this is going to be equal to an entity with the model is equal to a cube. The color is color.green. And the scale is 10.514. I'm also going to set the position equal to just 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a texture of a white cube. So I said texture equal to white cube. Yep. So now if I run this, you'll see that, well, I do have a table, but this doesn't really look like a table. And the reason why it doesn't really look like a table is because the camera setting is uh, just looking at the side view of this table. And now let's add a camera to the scene and change or adjust the camera to have a better view of the table. And so what we could just do to change the position of the camera is right camera dot position is equal to uh your coordinates and mine is going to be 0 15 negative 26 so it's zero on the x 15 on the y and negative 26 on the z position and i'm also going to rotate my camera so it has a better view of the table by writing camera dot rotation underscore and I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis 30 degrees. And so now if I run this, you'll see that I have a better view of my table. All right. So I've added my camera as well as my table. And now I can add in my two paddles by writing paddle A is equal to an entity with the parent equal to table and the color equal to color dot black. I'm going to set the model equal to a cube. Set the scale equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.03, 0 0.05. And set the position equal to 0 on the x, 3.7 on the y, 0.22 on the z. And since this is a paddle, we wanted to collide off a ball. And so we want to add a box collider by writing collider is equal to a box. All right, and since Pong is usually a two player game, we want to create another paddle. So paddle B. And instead of rewriting all this stuff, I can write duplicate and I would duplicate paddle A. Except, except I want to set the Z position equal to negative 0.62. So if I save and run this, you'll see that I have two paddles on both sides of my board. All right. And you'll notice that I defined a parent relationship here. And I set the table entity uh, as the parent of the paddles. So what does this parent parameter really do? Well, this parent parameter, well, in game engines, entities are usually organized in hierarchies, and there's usually a way to define the parent relationship during entity creation. And in the Yersinet engine, when an object is created, it is automatically assigned to the 3D scene as a parent. But we could change that. So here, by claiming the table as the parent when creating the paddle entities, we're basically telling the paddles that the parent is not the 3D scene anymore but instead the table is. 
and when an object is in the hierarchy with another object, its position is relative to the other object and is no longer to the center of the scene. In fact, its parent is now considered the starting coordinate. So now let's add some text to identify each player. So underneath this camera rotation, I can write text and the text is going to be equal to player A. I'm going to scale it by 2 and set the position equal to negative 0.1 and 0.3 on the y. So it's negative 0.1 on the x, 0.32 on the y. I'm going to do the same thing for player B. And the scale is 2. The position is equal to negative 0.1 and negative 0.4. So now I'm going to run this. And here you see that I have player A up here and player B down here. Cool. So I'm also going to add in our center line to help distinguish the center of this table. So somewhere over here. And I'm also going to add an art ball by writing line is equal to entity, parent is equal to table, uh, model is equal to quad, and scale is equal to 0 0.88, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And I'm also going to set the position equal to 0 on the x, 3.5 on the y, and negative 0.2 on the z. And now this basically just created the line, and so I'm going to create the ball as well. So ball is equal to entity, parent is equal to table, model is equal to sphere, color is equal to color.red, scale is equal to 0 0.05, the position is equal to 0, 3.71, and negative 0.2 and again since this ball is going to collide off of the paddles i need to add a box collider so collider is equal to box so if i run this i have my center line and my ball in the center so now we've basically added all the entities we need for the pong game and you notice that nothing is really moving yet. So now let's try to move our paddles. And to just move our paddles, remember that we want to create an update function. So define update, define update. And this update function is called once per frame when you run the program. And I want to get user input. So let's say the user presses the left arrow key. Then I want to move paddle B to the left. Or if they press the right arrow key, I want to move paddle B to the right. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So paddle B, X, or dot X. So the X position of paddle B is equal to paddle B dot X, the previous paddle B dot X plus held keys brackets and inside of these brackets are what button the user presses and for this case it's going to be right arrow multiplied by time by dt so if the user presses the right arrow key i want the paddle to move to the right oops and if the user presses the left arrow key i want the paddle to move to the left left row times time by gt so here you notice that instead of plus i use minus and when i use minus it's going to move uh the paddle to the left and i use left row and this is for paddle b now i want to do the same thing except with paddle a so all i'm going to do is copy and paste this and change these values to a And instead of right arrow, in my case, if they press D, I want paddle A to move to the right. And, and if they press A, 
I want my paddle A to move to the left. Okay, so now if I run this, you'll see that I can move both paddles at the same time and each individually. And if I press a different button like F or G, nothing really happens. And so the game only checks for left or right arrow key or A or D. Alright, so now that we have this down, let's move our ball. So we want our ball to also move. And let's create two variables, dx and dz. And dx is going to represent the change of the x position, x position of the ball. And this is going to be equal to 0.1. And dz is going to be the change in the z position of the ball. And so it's going to be 0.2. And so in this update function, I am going to declare global dx dc. And I'm going to update the ball's position in this function. So ball.x is equal to the previous ball.x plus time.dt multiplied by dx. And the same thing with ball.z is equal to ball.z plus time.dt. Uh, times dz and if I run this you'll see that the ball is moving to the right however if I try to block it well you see that the ball does go through this paddle even though both of these entities have a collider and the reason for this is because we don't really check for a collision and so let's do that right now so collisions and we're going to have a variable called hit info is equal to ball dot enter sex. And if hit info hit info dot hit. And we also want to check if the ball hit a paddle. So if hit info dot entity is equal to paddle a or hit info that entity is equal to paddle b then dz is equal to negative dz and all this does is that it reverses the uh, z movement of the ball and so if i collide with the ball you'll see that the ball did uh, move back so the ball changed the ball's z uh, movement changed all right, so now we're able to block the balls with the paddles, but the ball can still go out of the left and right boundaries, as we see here. So I will block it, and the ball is able to go out of this boundary, which we really don't want. So we want to add boundary checking. And we can add boundary checking inside of this update function. So boundary checking. And now I'm going to check um, left, so left and right boundary checking. And so if the absolute value of ball dot x is greater than 0.4, then dx is equal to negative dx. And so the ball's z movement will reverse if the ball hits a boundary. Well, you saw there that the ball did indeed bounce. And in here, the ball bounced, the ball bounced, and yeah. So you can see that this is working. And now that we have this, let's also check, um, we also want to keep score of the ball by having a score variable down here. So score a is equal to zero score b is zero and it's going to keep track of the scores for player a and player b and so i'm going to have a score a up here and score b up here and how boundary checking is going to work or how we're going to keep track of scores 
is whenever the ball goes out of the top or bottom boundary, that's how you know that the opposing player gets a point. And uh, so what we could do is here, instead of checking left and right, check up or top and bottom boundaries. So if ball dot z is greater than 0.25, score b is equal to the previous score b plus one. And we want to print on the screen. I'm gonna use a F string here. So player A, player B is equal to score A, score B. And we can add some other parameters. I can set the position of this text equal to negative 0 0.85, 0 0.45. I can set the scale equal to two, and the duration equal to two seconds. So that just means that this text will stay on the screen for two seconds. And when this happens, I also wanna call a reset function that I'm gonna add later. And all that's gonna do is reset the ball's position. And so this checks for the top boundary, and now we wanna check for the bottom boundary. So if ball.c is less than negative 0.65, Score A is equal to score A plus one. And basically the same thing here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Except I'm going to change this position. Actually, no, I don't need to change that position. And that's it. So if I save and run this, I'll let that go. Oh, that's right. We need to add in our reset function. And again, this reset function, all it does is resets the position of the ball. So ball.x is zero, ball.z, and I'm gonna set this to negative 0.2. So I'm gonna run this. And you see that when the ball goes over there, uh, the score increases. I'm gonna let this play out for a second. The ball goes there, and player B earns a point. And player A's points should increase. All right, cool. So now the game is basically complete, except to make it more fun, let's add some sound effects. And we're gonna add two. So whenever the paddle hits the ball, there's gonna be a collision sound. And whenever someone gets a point, there's gonna be a whistle sound. So to add the collision sound, um, when we are checking for collision, all we had to do is just add the audio. So audio sounds pong sound dot wav. And when this happens, that just means that when the ball collides with the paddle, this sound is going to play. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, except when the ball goes past the boundary and the player loses, I'm going to play this whistle sound. So audio sounds whistle dot wav, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. And if I run this, uh, you heard that there's a whistle sound one there player loses and when the uh, ball bounces there's also a bouncing sound all right so this is the end of this video i want to thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time